All right, so I put the, the slides for my talk up here, and it's so it's at uh, seanq.github.io uh, forward slash gdh2020, and I have no idea if it will work or not. Uh, so this this uh, this uh, this uh, poster is a collaborative work with uh, Emma Dutta, who teaches at Government Zamindar Postgraduate College, and uh, Rajiv Ranjan, who's a, a professor of Hindi here. And the overview of this project is that explaining poetic meter in, in for the languages of South Asia other than English is, uh, well, even for English as well, is tough even for experienced poets. Less familiar readers or listeners have difficulty learning them. And one of the troubles is that the traditional prosodic systems do not align well with the phonological features of modern South Asian languages. So modern scholars across South Asian languages have offered alternative ways to think of meter. And we are augmenting that work by presenting software to visualize poetic meter using directed graphs. In uh, multiple languages and scripts, it makes poetic knowledge accessible to readers, scholars, and poets, is our hope. And so the, just some really quick background. In general, the, uh, the poetic prosody of, in South Asian languages is durational. So it's based on length rather than on stress. Uh, so it's durational rather than accentual. And most of the existing tools primarily focus their, their prosodic domains on stress. And so they're somewhat insufficient for the task. And in South Asia, there are two competing theories of prosody. Um, at least two. Uh, so one is derived from Arabic, it's called Uruz, and one is uh, from Sanskrit called Chanda. And so I'll just talk very quickly about the theories of prosody. So the Perso Arabic system is traces its origins through Persian back to uh, uh, Al Khalil ibn Ahmed of Basra. And the, it was conceived to be of a revelation uh, to him. And uh, its basic unit is orthography or the written Arabic letter. And it, while it's really precise for classical Arabic, by the time it gets to Persian and also then to Urdu, it becomes uh, combina combinatorially explosive and as units can form across uh, words and so on. The general, in general, the Sanskrit system defines long and short units based on its abugida or segmental writing system. So here you see the name of the, um, the wealthiest actor in the world, Shah Rukh Khan, and you can see the different segments that become the, the basis of the metrical system. And while it's also, again, while it's very precise for Sanskrit by the, uh, in modern South Asian languages where the short vowel endings drop, the pingle system doesn't, doesn't align very well. And so despite their order of authenticity, to borrow uh, Mufti's term, uh, both systems, especially in their nomenclature, do not align well with modern languages and appear overly complex. So modern prosodists have attempted to make prosody more accessible by referring to patterns of long and short metrical units. And so this is happening in English as well as in Urdu and, and uh, other languages. And so these are represented using macrons and brevs and other symbols. So we're interested in representing poetic meter as a directed graph. And so it's considered, so we're representing poetic meter as a walk, which is a sequence of vertices or nodes and edges through a directed graph, which uh, offers a significant advantage over previous metrical representations. And it also allows South Asian language poetic text to be represented visually in their poetic meter without the complications of traditional prosody. Okay, so our graphical model assumes start and end nodes, and the nodes represent short, short and long metrical units. So here's our visual model. So you can see the long units here are rectangles. So we start at the, on the left with the start and end at the, uh, at the end. And the short metrical units are circles. And the traditional metrical feet are represented as clusters. So you can see this, the, for example, the, the long rectangles. And this is the pos these are the possible uh, walks to the graph. So there's an optional short syllable at the end. That doesn't count. And the advantage is that, th is that, that this system resolves uh, issues of metrical flexibility and complexity that in traditional prosody lead to what most uh, many critics uh, refer to as excessive categorization to accommodate the Arabic and Persian, sorry, the Arabic and Sanskrit metrical categories. And it also visualizes the patterns of durational sound that produce meaning for poets and their listeners. So, uh, so I'm working on a, we're working on a, um, a Python and JavaScript module called Urdu Biometer, which hopefully will be uh, released soon. And we, uh, just uh, uh, what came out of that project is something called Graph Transliterator. Uh, 
And uh, this has actually been reviewed in uh, JOSS, the Journal of Open Source Software. I highly recommend uh, that experience. It was really, really helpful. Uh, so the uh, tokens are, are categorized and assigned to metropole units where uh, long or short and labeled based on what specific metropol unit is applied. Uh, so here's an example. This is just the, the Python code. You can see what the scan result would look like. And uh, so for the web interface and also for other inter forms, we're interested in uh, using a graph layout. And that's done using the GraphViz library. So graphic uh, layout is really complicated. Um, mathematically and they thankfully uh, figured it out. And then we're using a uh, JavaScript implementation of it called uh, Dagger D3. So it's D3 based, which is, um, and uh, so they're all data points actually within the, within the, uh, within the, within the graphic. And so uh, just quickly, so the advantages is that this uh, potentially works across the multiple scripts of South Asian reading and listening publics. And it advances earlier methods of visualizing meter by affording new sorts of interaction, particularly in web-based environments. And for scholars, directed graphs offer, allow an elegant means to visualize metrical complexity, and as well as open, opens up new types of analytics. And for listeners, it, it gives you also the possibility to view the walk uh, colored in time with a uh, with a, a particular audio or visual recordings. And this is something we're uh, we're experimenting with and the you can see a uh, demo of it here this is the one that uh, Miguel showed, showed yesterday I'm working on a new one so I'll, I'll hopefully update this uh, github uh, site at some point and so this uh, this research was uh, supported by the uh, New Directions uh, Mellon Foundation uh, sorry Mellon Foundation New Directions Fellowship and also by the scheme for the promotion of academic uh, research collaboration, uh, uh, which we received with uh, Jami Mili Islamia. Uh, so this is just the the demo from um, that I'll hopefully update. I don't know if it will work for you. I'll just show it very quickly. Uh, and so the interface allows for for visualizing in different languages, and also and the nodes themselves are interactive, so you can um, get information about them. Thank you.